valued students and professors. It's a tremendous honor to introduce our guest of honor for today's TDE lecture series, edition one, impactful education towards crime prevention. Now, I request my inspiring teacher, our mentor, Dr. Aravind Gupta, the director of DDE for the welcome address. Namaskar and Vanakkam. It's my pleasure to welcome the dignitaries on dais, the August gathering, and dear students. It's a proud privilege to welcome our esteemed Vice Chancellor, Professor Gurmeet Singh Ji, a visionary for the innovative and 360 degree measures towards establishing the Pondicherry University as a center of research and excellence. Uh, just now, I got a message. He has left for Delhi uh, for some urgent meeting. So he has sent his uh, wishes and uh, he blessed us that our event should be successful. Uh, this lecture series aims towards continuing education by eminent speakers across fields of specialization. Envisaged by Dr. Gurmeet Singh Ji, the Honorable Vice Chancellor, Pondicherry University, these lectures would create platforms of knowledge sharing, inspiration, and continuing learning. It is a proud moment for us to initiate the lecture series with the presence of the dynamic super cop, Shirmati Chaya Sharma. IPS, Joint Commissioner of Police of Eastern Range, New Delhi. We are humbled to have you amidst us today, ma'am, and address the issues. We are aware that there are busy schedules at New Delhi and much appreciate the time taken to be with us and deliver this inaugural lecture. Welcome to Pondicherry, ma'am. To this morning program, I express a hearty welcome to Director Culture Cultural Relation Professor Rajiv Jain, Chairman East Coast Hospitals, Dr. Ann Morgeson, Dean School of Humanities, Professor Clement Sagai Raj. It is happiness to welcome Director, Registrar, Finance Officer, Control of Examinations, Library, and all officers to this morning of knowledge sharing. A warm welcome to all the deans, heads of the departments, and the faculty of various departments with us this morning. Welcome to each this morning. A warm welcome to every team member of DDE to this morning. Digital technology has enabled to share this lecture exponentially, as well as made it easy to create a speaker, a speaker audience interface across distances. Welcome our online viewers. I welcome the students present here and wish the youth community an inspired morning. Thank you very much.
Mohammed Nizamuddin, the faculty of TDE, to introduce about our today's inspiring speaker. Uh, good morning, one and all. It is my great privilege and honor to introduce our guest uh, speaker, Mrs. Chaya Sarma. Mrs. Chaya Sarma, IPS, is currently serving as Joint Commissioner of Police of Eastern Rail, New Delhi. Her earlier assignments have been Joint Commissioner of Police, Economic Offense Wing, Delhi, and Deputy Inspector General at the National Human Rights Commission, India. She has been at the forefront of both detection and investigation of cases of crimes, law and order issues, and protection of human rights during her career, which spans across 21 years at Puducherry, Arunachal Pradesh, Mizoram, and Delhi. Mr. Chaya Sarma's work has consistently reflected her victim-centric approach through numerous investigations of a wide array of serious crimes, particularly with respect to women and children. Mrs. Chaya Sarma's investigation of the sensational Nirbhaya case leading to a conviction of the criminals has showcased as a role model across the nation. Delhi crime, <laughs> Delhi crime, a popular OTT series brought to light the journey of the Nirbhaya investigation and the pivotal role played by Mrs. Chaya Sarma in rendering justice. Chaya Sarma's work as a police officer has received several appreciations and accolades. Her cases on trafficking have received a special commendation from the Honorable High Court of Delhi in 2001. She is the proud recipient of two special duty medals for her service in remote and insurgency affected areas in the northeast of India in 2004 and 2015, and has also been awarded the President's Police Medal for meritorious service in 2015. In addition to the above, she has also been awarded the McCain Institute of International Leadership Award for Leadership and Courage for the year 2019. More recently, she also received the Home Minister's Medal for Excellence in Investigation by the Government of India. She was also awarded the Asia Game Changer Award 2019 in New York by the Asia Society. An outstanding student and vivid reader, a sports person, are collaborative in the personality of our speaker today. The conscientious responsibility do not deter her from an amazing sense of humor, love for music, and deep value of humanity. Now, may I request our distinguished guest to deliver the special lecture. Now the floor is open to you, ma'am. A very good morning and welcome to all of you. Uh, first of all, at the outset, I would like to thank uh, the university, uh, our uh, director, distance education, was after my life for the last one month that I have to come, and I was avoiding and uh, regularly telling him that sir, I don't have time and I will not get permission, but he insisted and he made sure that I got permission and I could come here and uh, be part of this uh, nice occasion. And uh, secondly, I would also like to thank. Uh, uh, the vice chancellor who for unfortunately could not be with us i have seen him in delhi when we were uh, young officers as uh, dcps and he would be organizing the uh, you know during the dusu elections we would go and he would be uh, the proctor there and he would be uh, doing a lot of uh, arrangements so I, I was looking forward actually to meet him and remind him of the meetings that we've had but unfortunately he's not here so i would request uh, arvindji to give him my regards whenever he meets him. And yeah, and Dr. Rajiv Jain, uh, Dr. Murugeshan, and uh, Professor Clement are the, like the cherry on the cake that I meet today. Also, very interestingly, I'd like to say that uh, uh, today um, I also met one of my head girls. You know, she was a head girl, Radhika Khanna. And uh, her sister was my schoolmate. So like schoolmate from nursery to 12, 14 years, same school. So I'm very honored today, like a lot of, uh, you know, meeting people whom I, uh, you know, then uh, your OSD was working with me in uh, the police department and uh, when I was here. So uh, we have very fond memories of Pondicherry as a whole and Pondicherry police department especially. 
actually technically we are uh, uh, kind of alumni of the distance uh, education also because my husband has done his masters in financial management from here and uh, i could not finish my course but i my i did enroll for the mass human rights course which is like quite one point in time very famous from pondicherry university so in that sense it's like coming back to school and uh, i feel very honored that uh, and this opportunity was given to me to interact with you on such a serious topic uh, especially when when i was discussing with him and my dear friend asha his wife that uh, you know what topic should i speak on so without even consulting me this topic came up and uh, you know we had to like find how we should we should approach this topic so that it makes uh, it is meaningful uh, for you and uh, not and also uh, that all of us can relate me as a police officer and you know you as people who are in the education department or in the education system students as well as you know uh, teachers professors so that we can actually contribute to the society as a whole so without taking much time and apologies for my uh, throat uh, i still will try to complete it nicely and finish it properly so can i have the next slide please so uh, basically when we talk about crime prevention uh we should understand what is crime prevention then it can be a range of strategies it can be measures and actions taken by either an individual it can be by you know law enforcement agencies it can be by institutions like puducherry university can take a you know initiative and anything which will reduce or deter or you know and have criminal activity or enhance public safety and minimize the risk of crime occurring and above all hold the up, you know uphold the rule of law so rule of law means like then you look at each and everybody whether he is from a vulnerable section or he is from the 50% of the humanity or the women or he is from part of the children anybody who is vulnerable uh, they have everybody has to be looked at from the same rule of law and then there becomes the fairness part comes from the part of police the primary goal what is the goal of crime prevention it is basically to proactively address the underlying causes of criminal behavior and create conditions you see to discourage criminal acts i will explain how thereby reducing harm and victimization caused by the crimes for example if a lady gets uh, you know uh, teased and molested or maybe even more when you go more heinous you know harm then we have to create uh, you know spaces of, of you know we have to create an environment where women feel safe where we have to also create an environment where to prevent such a crime even the men get some kind of education upbringing where they understand the consequences of such a crime and they, that they are not only prevent themselves from harm because once you get involved in a case you don't get a visa you can't go and study abroad you cannot travel you know your uh, it's not just incarceration in a jail but you get caught and you cannot uh, come out of that vicious circle it is difficult to come out of the vicious circle of crime once you do anything whether it is on a impulsive nature silly nature way or it is a predetermined act so can we go to the next slide please <coughs> so basically you can have all sorts of approaches you can have education you can have community engagement you can have a law enforcement uh, efforts like for us in delhi we are doing these programs like we are doing this yuva so what we do is we identify that there is a large chunk of juvenile delinquents they are school going kids parents don't have time probably friends uh, are influencing them movies are influencing them and they are going and you know stealing bikes uh doing chain snatching uh you know teasing women uh going to bars and pubs in the night drinking away and when they're dead drunk they'll pick up a girl and think probably uh, any girl they can pick up even, and don't worry about the consent part so like all of this for that we identify areas where juveniles can then even before they enter crime you know they, we identify areas and we identify families where they are the children at the brink of crime and then we we win them away we give them vocational classes so minister this time especially in delhi police uh since last year 
we are uh, taking up a program called yuva where the ministry of uh, skill development has also uh, tied up with delhi police and we are uh, doing courses there are 27 courses which are being offered right from makeup artist to uh, a driver uh, you know heavy vehicle driver to uh, uh, you know like in common uh, in during corona we did not have enough health workers so like health workers so the the children is juveniles can choose from a uh they are not coming from good families in and of social no i'm not saying good family as in good bad but in terms of economically well families so these courses are free now even if the courses are free it is difficult to get these children to come and attend them so we have to request convince parents uh, create a mela for them uh then let them choose give them a choice ki which uh, other uh, you know uh, which out of the bouquet of services would you like because if you say every girl does not want to be a tailor every girl doesn't want to be a beautician so she might want to do something else so that flexibility and freedom we have to give and then when we educate them or we try to win them away as a law enforcement agency we are contributing towards crime prevention similarly there can be social interventions there are ngos <coughs> there are ngos who are aligning with us and uh, participating in such activities also uh, when i was dcp south i remember there were uh, there was an area where uh, children were being lifted now uh, we uh, try to study why there are there are more instances of uh, children being kidnapped from there because women did not know where to leave the child they were all workers and they would be away for say 10 hours and 12 hours so the, we engaged an ngo who created a crash and they did a count of the children whether or not the you know the child would be given to them or not they will go door to door they will make sure that the child is taken care of and the the frequency of you know the children being picked up went down so these are strategies you know which can be used another thing is like you know when schools offer mid day meals school dropout rates fall down because you know parents feel at least the child is getting one meal so it's not targeted against all but it it is targeted towards people who are both working already at the edge you know the, you when you call the below poverty line or just above the poverty line not being able to fend for themselves if you don't give them support so when these environmental you know uh, you know situations are made better we are with a lot of effort which goes in the society there is police there is ngo and there is community you got i have worked in mizoram suppose a, a rape happens in mizoram you know what happens even if sometimes the parents don't want to come and complain the whole society will uh, you know come together there will be ngos who will complain become so motor complainants and then you know the police is forced to take up the case and they will become witnesses they will go and help and they will uh, help the child counsel the parents so it's the community which you know and then there is this uh, this is because it is, a, it is a very close society there is the uh, pressure for social ostracization everybody knows everybody so if i am found doing a crime nobody will talk to me so you know that and the community then tries to tell them if you don't behave properly if you indulge in crime or such crimes which are going to affect our women you will be ostracized and that is a big threat just sit in one room and don't talk to anybody for a week see what will happen to you mentally and on no phone so you you know you are going to be that interaction with society man is not a, able to you know live alone then you know sometimes there are uh, strategies which where we try to pr- promote positive behaviors we are also trying to uh, br- you know give opportunities and motivation like when we create these vocational uh, courses or we are encouraging good behavior like for example if someone does catches a snatcher so we call them to our office uh, give them 5000 rupees from our fund we make sure they have a cup of tea so they know like it's a good behavior i don't know if to do this i think but if i prevent a snatcher from taking uh, or helping uh, or help a woman on the street i am getting rewarded can you the next slide please so similarly you know you can go on and on and it, it's very important that uh, you uh, continue to uh, you know aim towards uh, crime prevention then for example uh, you can continue to i can continue to elaborate on this but uh, this is more uh, like more textbookish but it is like 
you can character characterize crime prevention in different parts for example situational targeting specific situation and a specific environment and you reduce crime then it can be a social uh, setting also socially uh, people do not like a particular you know, like you find in certain areas maybe in the northeast maybe in kerala maybe in south india also there's a lot of respect for women i first uh, time i went on a uh, i came to tamil nadu and uh, with my mother and i boarded a bus and uh, i was surprised that one whole side was left for women and this was never seen in delhi and sometimes you will even find men sitting on women seats and not getting up but it was amazing and i was a kid at that point in time so as a society and if suppose that side was full and you know you were struggling to stand somebody will get up and say please sit so you know it is that society as a whole contributing towards this thing and everybody is you know shaking their head so it is when society says yes this is how you behave towards women then you know it's like everybody is encouraged and community based crime prevention is like you know what happens is that i'll give you one example uh, there were a lot of women at one point in time in delhi we were getting from jharkhand so they were coming as maids and you know uh, people were coming so we were already like okay fine you contact this agent he will get you a maid and since both husband wife are working they will always have maid problem <coughs> so what happens is that over a period of time jharkhand police started working on but now all maids don't get their salaries all maids don't land up going back some agents are bad they will traffic them they will uh, misuse them they will uh, you know sometimes even rape the girl so uh, there are a lot of uh, issues and sometimes you know employers don't want the uh, lady to connect with her family so there are issues parents will get worried where is my daughter i have not spoken to her for 2 years and no salary also being received so and then suddenly the, the person who has taken the child away from jharkhand to delhi they that connect is lost so jharkhand police did a very nice exercise they started targeting the community like for example there are five girls who will go from a village they said okay nothing doing without consent of the village panchayat these girls will not go so parents choice got limited which agents will take the children now all agents have to get registered with the labor department so when you have to get registered with the government department all of you know how difficult it is you have to give your aadhar card you have to give your you have to tell your son's name wife's name your uh, appa's name and someone has to take guarantee for you say an or take like i certify that x person is correct so when all this validation happens the fellow cannot run away he has to come back and only those people will be given the license to take children or women and give get them work in the cities so this is a very positive way then all these women were given like sometimes an uneducated unskilled woman goes to the city and uh, the agent does not give them any training and he says okay now you cook roti you make this sabji she would not know she will make a mistake maybe at home she has never washed the dishes with her mother she does not know any skill then she gets titranga you understand that they will say yo why why you know we are paying you 15000 rupees why you are not doing this she has been told by the agent that she knows everything she is very skilled no this this uh, she is getting this titranga or this uh, you know scolding because she is unskilled and they are trying to get her the uh, salary of a skilled labor so this gap first filled up by the, the jharkhand police they engaged uh people who will who train these girls so unless the girl had a certificate she was trained she was not allowed to leave the village so what happened is that then now when you go as a skilled person like you are educated you go to the market for a job you are able to demand you go as a unskilled person they will say hey, tujhe to kuch aata nahi hai fatak se your salary will go half so your skill gives you you know that ability to earn more and your rights become better so the more uh, you know awareness about rights what you can do what you can't do uh, you should keep a phone if you, if you don't get a hol- holiday once a week this is what you should do this is the numbers you should contact so they will give everything to that, them so that kind of you know uh, it's like uh, the community the started building uh, this base with the girls who were being taken away for um, the work in delhi and slowly slowly what started happening was they started getting better jobs 
the uh, the uh, exploitation stopped i am connecting it with crime so exploitation of these girls stop because what happens if the girl is not found anywhere and she goes missing there will be a kidnapping case registered in jharkhand so kidnapping cases in jharkhand went down and it became also difficult now because now she is educated she has choices she has she would not go only to delhi she said i will go to calcutta if not calcutta i will work here i will open my own canteen here i will work as something so you know when your knowledge base and skill base on your education increases your choices of what you should do and what you should not do becomes better and then that reduces crime as a whole in my view and here was a very good example where the community participated uh, in the ter- in tandem with the police and in tandem with the ngos and uh, in jharkhand and made sure that now it's very difficult to find a jharkhandi made in delhi ask anybody in delhi i am a witness next slide please so for example society and economic cost of crime are uh, extremely significant and wide ranging why i am saying that is because crime can have a very profound effect on individual societies and overall economy i'll tell you why for example someone wants to set up a, a big industrial uh, we used to have this scz in pondicherry so why did they choose pondicherry because crime rate was low because it was a good weather because political parties were willing to give them shops so everything is not with standing there are places in up there are places in uh, you know haryana people will not put up a factory they will not put up industries why because high crime rate they are not sure whether their uh, you know the money that they invest will be safe so an area gets promoted also because crime is less and then because of crime being less more you know this business is start coming here so that is a very big you know so and when business comes your again it comes with money it comes with opportunity it comes with salaries people don't have to go to a different state or a different village or a, or a city they can continue to work at their base and perform but again if the crime rate is high then it is very difficult for that particular business to survive there and overall economy gets affected So I'm just giving you a small example, and I saw it in Pondicherry. So in so many other states, there was a place in UP. I don't want to name it, but at one point in time, the crime rate was so high that people did not want to invest. In fact, there was a, a, a you know, people wanted to leave the city and invest somewhere else because of the crime rate. And that is how there is a downfall sometimes, and you know, an area, in areas you want to go buy a house, you will never buy a house where crime is high. because you you will always feel ki oh i have to buy a house i'm investing so much of my life savings better do it in a place which is crime free so next please now you know you can what is the importance this, this anybody can you know understand this basically it's the victim's cost any uh, victim is the first person who gets affected by crime but it is, does not mean that it does not affect the entire society the ex- entire family gets affected and you know till the till the whole case is over the whole family also is trying to you know come to terms with things so the trauma and the you know the physical uh, cost of uh, bearing this goes also very high then you have this law enforcement and criminal justice cost so when you talk about crime prevention all these costs go down you can have a look i don't want to go into all the details but any discussion any point we can have later and like i mentioned the area development cost i was talking about that particular area even when crime happens also suppose your brother or your sister he gets involved in a crime once now you want to wean the person away there is a cost involved in rehabilitation and reintegration nobody will be ready to give them a job nobody will be ready to accept them in the society nobody will marry them then the their relatives will also oh, his sister is involved in crime so therefore i will not marry my brother to another relative of theirs so as a society you suffer so that is why it is very important that individuals start understanding that crime prevention is a very important role and society as a whole plays a very important role next please can we go to the next slide please 
so we have to now i come back to the main topic that education is actually a great pathway to stable employment or business and stable employment means your poverty gets reduced you know your economic status gets better you guys understand what you mean by relative deprivation can anybody tell me relative deprivation keeping up with the joneses economics no okay so what happens is that young boys 16 years old 17 years old want to have a bike they want to have white which one and torque the fast moving bike fast horsepower and i want to be faster than my friend so i both no equal bike driving but the faster the horsepower in my vandi i will go faster so it will be there is this competition then the fellow will cry to he does not have money 16 year old 17 year old doesn't have money to buy a 70000 or a 1 lakh 25000 bike what he will do amma please give me a bike in our times if i did that with my mother my mother would say come three times first in your class then you i will talk about giving you a cycle now the children just do a little bit of thing they get a iphone they get um, these bikes and everything quickly parents also want ke allo bhaiya chutti pao but what happens is now these boys the relative deprivation is ki oh my neighbor has a better bike every year phones are improved i am still using a 2019 bought phone anybody can check but you know i have people my subordinates every year new phone will come yeah and i said what to why do you and expect every time is an expensive phone so if my phone is a 30000 rupee phone the original uh, the one plus which came and now it is uh, probably this man have thrown away this phone buy the latest iphone i can't buy <laughs> and i feel like but they are you know that relative deprivation is there because of my education because of my society uh, position i don't feel relatively deprived i don't feel that i have to attach Uh, any economic status or you know any status to which phone i am using but you know less education means the relative deprivation will be high your females were not educated sitting in as wives of somebody rolling pins and not de- de- uh, denigrating the part that they are you know housekeeping is not a big job but uneducated or low educated ones every day the world becomes a house what happens pakatla veedu la paakre na they'll go and see Oh, she has a bigger TV, ah, huh? 52 inch. Nah, huh? where they will go and fight with the husband. They see big one. The HD has come. So HD plus plus has come. There is no end to technology. But because of this debt, now where will the money come for this? Your salaries remain stagnant, or little little increment comes. How will this money come? Cry. something or the other if you do corruption or you the boys go and do a joy ride pick up somebody's bike sell it to somebody get extra money night riders sometimes we catch young boys in the night what are you doing we are all studying engineering from fala fala university okay fine we will check the thing oh what are you, what are you doing uh, you are round with liquor you are uh, caught catching snatching what for why did you need to do the snatching go, come from good families Uh, parents don't give money for going to the bar but night we have to go to a club because we saw in the movie x hero goes to a club every night or something that will inspire them so the wrong stereotypes wrong models no this is contribution of society to crime police has nothing to do with it i can't stop Ro- rohit chetty from making films like singam but i have to keep telling them i'm not singam and yet i'm an effective cop I don't need to throw people out like that, but people don't understand that. You ask anybody, your OSD is from police, big man. Has he ever done that? Has he ever thrown people? There will be NHRC after him. He will be incarcerated. There will be a case. If you do too much of beating, somebody dies in your uh, police custody. There is a case against three zero two can get registered. We have to be very careful. But movie will show that you know you are doing everything. but that is not the way we work so somehow there is a disconnect and this disconnect lack of education it makes the disconnect higher and then you get inspired by the wrong things when you get inspired by the wrong things you tend to commit crime so what role does education play education plays a very important role in giving you the correct thing no 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 what they are showing is wrong the reality is this the ability to internalize 
the positive things from a movie. Take the good part that yes, Singham stood up to all that he did not indulge in corruption even though offered. That part we will not see. We will only see the macho part of it. So you don't have to be macho, na? You have to be rule oriented. You have to be. You should know your work professionally. So if you go for a, if you can't write an FIR, but you are macho enough to throw a man out, it will not be because the victim will need FIR. He will have the, uh, uh, the when your Wendy gets stolen and you want to apply for insurance, it is your FIR which is important. Who writes the FIR? If the policeman cannot write FIR, he can go home. Nowadays we are getting uh, very educated people as su sub inspectors and as inspectors. But some of them are engineers, some of them are uh, MBAs. But it's not about that. It's about more education means. <coughs> their response to crime, their response to the society, how they will deal with a lady when she comes to the police station uh, and how he will talk, how he will leave his, uh, you know, this baggage of uh, patriarchy behind and treat every victim equally. All that shows because of education. So that I want to stress over here and basically, uh, you know, good education reduces the motivation for crime. You're getting money from a good uh, you know your, your education, your uh, job. You don't need uh, a quick solution. You don't need motivation for uh, crime. You don't need. Oh, I want a chain, so let me go and snatch a chain from my neighbor. She keeps wearing a you know ten tola chain. No, no, no. You go and do something sensible. Maybe that buying that chain will take you two months, three months, five months, maybe even a year. But do it nicely because it will have good effect for you. It will have good effect for the society as a whole. So everything gets this thing. And when you don't have money, when you don't have education, when you don't have a good job, this desperation will take you to crime. So by improving education, making sure education is available to a larger number of people, not just a few people, you can go on, keep studying PhD, double PhD, but your common sense. Your basic issues, social uh, understanding, social norms, all of them have to uh, be there so that, you know, that their respect for each other as a society is there. And then you start to uh, probably uh, reduce crime. Can have the next slide, please? So again, it comes to the same thing, social skills, values, ethics. You must have respect for uh, vulnerable sections, sense of pro propriety, value system, need for acceptability in the society. If I don't wear Wrangler jeans to, to college, Mama, I am going to be not part of a particular gang. I have to wear branded clothes and every time new clothes, not possible. When I went to college, I want to just share this. My mother bought me uh, two pairs of jeans from Tank Road, Karolbak. I got two Khadi Kurtas from Khadi Bhandar. I got one Kolapuri Chappal I bought from my own 70 rupees I spent, I remember, from uh, Janpat. One Bata Belly I got. And I still remember there was this, this campus shoes used to come. So I bought this campus shoes was given to me. So sometimes you want to wear jeans and you don't want to wear a chappal or a sandal so you wear that and two suits new that was all I got for joining a college and you know stepping into a university like Delhi University and when I went there every girl would be wearing every day different clothes there was we a daughter of a jeweler she's talking about you know the shade of green I was looking for for such a long time you know so basically same education but my parents were, you know, kind of more educated to tell me, babes, it's not your clothes which tell you who you are. It is what you do in life is more important. But these girls were go on talking, talking, talking of, oh, my watch, you know, I'm going to throw this watch after three months. I'm like, Maya, you have a watch and my mother says for the next three years, if you throw the watch, you don't get a watch. Udinji <laughs> Boycha. I, my father used to give me 100 rupees. This 100 rupees in a pinnal, you know, purse, you know, pocket. If you get stranded, some dharna, pradarshan, no bus available, then you take an auto and come. Otherwise, 12 rupee pass. Now, we used to get university pa bus pass 
for 12 rupees and another uh, you know irvadurva for maybe some snacking like we used to have 10 rupee plate idli in our college some chewing gum we want to buy but to uh, that's it and uh, nothing else and now when you look at other children and you see your own children sometimes what is wrong and that is used to be like you know the kind of upbringing i feel that what happened was that i did very well in college then because i my mind was not in these things and i knew even if my mind was in this thing my um, amma would throw me out and i saw my parents working so there was a role model they say i am not bothered my father will be very simply dressed my mother will be very, and they continuously they will say simple living high thinking simple living high. i went to a very good school a very good uh, school martyr convent i went to but spending on education spending on food or your health no problem but on this faltu things not no questions that is the door for you please go you want to earn something you do your own thing so i am just saying that giving this example to you to show that today where i am probably those girls are not there they are all my friends their colleagues some of them did not even graduate i was in a tough uh, this thing called economics by the time we start when we started first year we were 125 at the end we were only 40 children third year pass out i was shocked i did not know such such things and i said why why did this happen because this found it too tough someone went away to some other university some some people flung some couldn't cope up with economics went to a different uh, stream i was surprised i said like, what is this but that's how life is and today you know when you when you go to the same college and the college recognizes you as a very illustrious alumni you know this is what you bring back to the society you inspire other girls one of my seniors um, ips officer one day she called me and she said uh, my daughter is saying this your college is uh, not good college bhenji college the worst college in delhi university she said you know what i did i showed her the brochure and middle of the brochure your picture is there i said see if she can go there and do well in life you can also do i never imagined that you know somebody else sitting in you know some other part of the country is inspiring her daughter senior to me same ips i was feeling so nice i told my daughter so my daughter said oh i'm i'm already proud of you so don't have to you know push it in <laughs> but what i'm trying to say is that when you are doing little things in life you don't know how you know 10 years later these things will impact you and for example two things that i feel that education brings to you is empathy and conflict resolution skills so when an intelligent person gets into a traffic accident what happens in sare baba chhodo yaar okay at 1 2000 rupees dent i will take care instead of getting with this rowdy that lack of education was am i you are thinking about and you say, you will also show your brawn he will show your brawn then he may have a gun and you may not have a gun the 2000 rupees or 5000 rupees settlement or that conflict resolution skills or if you don't know how to talk some people when they get into a such mode they only say you know epithets they will start using bad words and then egos clash so eventually what happens there is conflict leads to more conflict and then crime they will break something on his head and gone so starting from a simple accident it became road rage then becomes 307 somebody's head grade broken and we have to have a bigger case so this anger management right this anger management conflict resolution empathy okay maybe if i was at the also at the back maybe i, I would have a difficulty to put a brake that is why the fellow would have got into my vandi no problem okay pa let's sort it out Uh, by talking that intelligent response to a difficult situation comes with education no education means i will only show brawn i don't have my brain working only my muscle will work i don't have muscles so frustrated energy you know all these children have this extra energy the people who are not studying too much have extra energy because we feel we have to study we will do give limited time to walking limited time to you know go this thing but when we are working we are working 16 hours 18 hours sometimes so i understand there has to be a work life balance but at the same time if a person is only sitting in the gym and he's going and doing that brawn for like only not focusing on his studies 
he was feeling sleepy no when you were in npa we were made to walk run do everything but when you were sitting in the class you were all sleeping everybody used to wake us up wake up wake up read ipc read this thing because you were tired we could not you know give that much of time so i am trying to say that frustration and you know other uh, uh, channelizing of energy has to be in a positive direction better towards education than towards uh, becoming a tall brown you know uh, what shall i say so sylvester stallone type of a guy so i'm not a, a great uh, favor of rocky and uh, all these movies because they give it the wrong in, wrong direction absolutely wrong direction i don't want you to be like one of those saints also who go around everywhere and talk keep talking of uh, god also again that is not going to help you finally do something education means you become part of society contribute to society have time to say okay i have done well in my life now i will give some adult education to poor women now i have finished my you know in my daughter where she is studying uh, they are asking them to devote 2 hours of their monthly time to educate children who are sitting staying in the slums so this is very nice so somewhere in the back of the mind their development their uh, selflessness for the kids come then she's part of one ngo where they are doing blood connect they are doing this donation business so anybody has any uh, blood donation issue they will follow up at connect and they will do this so the empathy part if i or my relative is in such a situation what i will do how i will do this how i i am not connected to the victim but i am helping the victim so this education is it plays a very important part in doing that can we go to the next one please and yeah, next one please next this is important because okay we we have understood the connection between crime prevention and education but children belong to families where there are more than two five children in ka the elder one is told to drop out of school because she should manage the kids at home and parents will go out for work something like that or they don't have education for the last two children so the drop out rate will increase or oh, you stay at home no problem we will see next year we will see next year so the new education policy says 14 year education is must you must every child must be given education by the time they are in they are four, up to the age of 14 years but is it possible so the education policy goes towards these mid day meals the parents have to be counseled many schools i have uh, heard that you know uh, there are no good bathrooms for women and when the puberty strikes for women you know they are they may knock and they find it difficult to you know use the bathrooms or they feel that the children will laugh those five days first they go missing then they become uncomfortable then they feel ki if i can miss five days in a month the mother says you might as well stay at home and look help me with the household so like that slowly slowly because of lack of infrastructure and infrastructure targeted at making women stay then they are connecting that so they are so that has to be taken care of so lot of ngos are now coming forward lot of this commu- uh, com- um, this um, you know community uh, work by uh, uh, corporates this corporate social responsibility is contributing towards targeting towards you know uh, creating uh, bathrooms for uh, you know uh, female bathrooms for schools and for uh, also for you know uh, encouraging uh, the use of uh, uh, that cup menstrual cup so that you know women are more free they can move around easily and they can understand the need for hygiene and the parents are also counseled then fees becomes an issue so if the school says that or the government says that till 14 you don't have to pay fees we will and what do you need for going to school you need dress so two pairs of uniform you need you need a bag you need pencil sharpener you need books so if all this is become free it becomes a package sapad mid day meal you are getting and basic infrastructure then which which parent will not send the child to school so they can be convinced easily so in an order that general public you know from the lower society if they are told if they are given these things you know delinquency can come down 
otherwise it, children have too much attraction ellar you know everywhere they have so much attraction they want to go there and they want to feel free no thitanga teacher will say to learn five pages of this book or learn that poem but outside i am with my five students sometimes i am climbing a tree sometimes i am stealing a mango and then i start to stealing valuable articles i become a pakka chor so this education when they make you disciplined they make you sit they make you learn they make you they give you also a lot of uh, you know conflict resolution power the power to do critical thinking what am i doing with my life what i will become after 5 years what i have to do for my mother you know do i have to do anything for my family and then you know attendance rates improve once attendance rates improve then adequate facilities are there mid day meal becomes a source of attraction they at least one proper meal they are giving another proper meal will provide for the kid so that takes care of the drop out rate next please so like that you can make sure that community you know slowly slowly through schools and other things can build up uh, the uh, area where education uh, is leads to become the pathway to crime prevention can you go to the next one please also very important thing i want to uh, wanted to highlight this uh, the last point over there was if children are alone sometimes you know we are all this going to a single child uh, syndrome earlier there used to be many children now there's a single child syndrome what happens is the child has no one to share care now there may be so many issues you know the stress must be building inside so very important uh, you know if you study psychology there is a whole chapter on stress management and stress management sometimes we don't understand like now there is a lot of um, because of whatsapp we get these messages so we have this girl gang you know if you have any issue we sit down with the girl gang and we say hey yaar this happened that happened the fellow students are equal the fellows are equally well qualified or whatever and they will guide you and say yaar don't worry this thing will happen so this networking okay you can talk to somebody somebody others example you can see and learn oh she's uh, you know still uh, um, behaving properly despite her big problems why can't i take lesson from her so like that you manage uh, stress and you reduce isolation so schools and all become hubs you know and what happens is there is a community where you talk of you know i am an alumni i am an iit alumni i am an i am an alumni what is an alumni basically alumni basically you hold your hand say don't worry because you are from iit delhi i am also from iit delhi and i will hold your hand because i am and then tomorrow my child is and you old so like that is this is you know community building happens and networking happens so you feel secure you don't feel alone and when this is this you don't feel alone you don't feel so psychologically you are a better person otherwise you need you can possible to you for you to go to crime this youth engagement business this is constructive activities and mentorship lot of these schools and uh, colleges have now started up uh, even you know in our uh, academy in an ips academy this uh, mentorship programs are there so i am mentoring like five ips junior ips officers so i am talking to them they continuously come back to me and ask me some issues so if you don't have a mentor sometimes parents you can't sometimes talk to about professional issues they will not understand your problem like my father was in the airline mother was in the, in the railways both of them would have not have known anything about policing so i must have a mentor in my organization where whom i can speak to freely and get my doubts cleared freely so that mentorship hand holding should be there so that is something which is you know engaging the youth and helping to not go in a different direction to be straight line and then also keeping the young people positively occupied you know next please it goes without saying jitna early invention hoga however much early you intervene and make sure that uh, you know uh, the you, you uh, do the corrective action for interfering in the society and making sure that the person who could have become a criminal does not become a criminal that early in, earlier the intervention the better when he once commits a crime and then you there are a lot of ngos who are working in that direction but once he commits a crime and you expect the person not to pull him back it is very difficult when he will sit alone it will be easier for him to go back 
अरे इट वॉज सो ईजी आई पुल दैट लेडीज चेन आई थ्रेट इन डर क्विकली आई गॉट फिफ्टी थाउजेंड रुपीज दैट मैन वॉज रेडी टू सेल टेक द चेन द ब्रोकन चेन मुथुट फाइनेंस विल ऑल्सो फाइनेंस इट so point is easy what is the difficult path every time people will say you were sometimes faced with two paths one is easy path shorter path the non acceptable path the one is a longer path difficult path but that widely acceptable path so that choice that decision making the conflict resolution every time in life you will feel for every little little issue you will feel you want to have what for food sometimes becomes a choice so the, all those choices can become why i am saying this very simple thing you don't understand why i talk about families who are like living at the edge husband comes drunk he'll say i want this particular sabji the lady made one particular sabji you know what the fellow will do is drunk already at that edge he will pick up the whole cooker and bang on her i have had cases like that on the lady so there is domestic violence there and there is this you know it leads to further uh, you know breaking down of households what happens to the children call on the enam ne pore the husband wife will fight but the children will see this and then they will run away they want a safe haven they want a safe place to go there no way to go who is going to adopt such children and what happens is then they get okay fine why should i go to school why should i you know, they have bad examples at home and they will like go and not you know focus on this thing so i am saying this these small decisions sometimes make a hell of a lot of difference in your lives and sometimes you know the more educated any society you see more women educated you will see the whole you know the whole society more educated and the more powerful they you know they become and then you know by doing this you are also uh, by identifying by helping by creating environments you are reducing the progression Uh, uh towards criminal behavior may I go to the next slide please so we've had these community policies and relationships i have told you already about yuva what we were doing and uh, the uh, uh, the bit about building trust next slide please okay so this is what i really wanted to focus on you have so many of these movies you know so when we were here in south india uh, we used to watch a lot of rajinikanth huh? so all the young boys want to emulate him very at halever and in north india they would want to emulate the angry young man the angry young man with amitabh bachchan or maybe now you know different one you can take any name idea is what is the role model or hero they will go and see one movie and they will get inspired it is age inappropriate material that they will see and unnecessary exposure is it necessary for you to have a girlfriend till you are not educated or in your college is it necessary but the kick is the hero goes around to the college with a you know girl behind that is the fun because the hero goes i have to have a girlfriend therefore one girl three boys after that one girl aapas mein ladenge they will break their head something else will happen the inappropriate behavior promotes the, whatever education goes you know down the drain We, we will all do this so when you talk of education you also have lot of media social media available there are sort of other inputs you are getting apart from what you are studying in college and school where does this go community has to ensure that such information is not unnecessary for the age but it's not possible all of us enjoy such movies then there is this of course i keep talking about relative deprivation but ayo look at she has so many every time she's going to college she's having so many dresses i'm not having so my daughter is staying in a hostel and her neighbor uh, you know her one of her uh, roommates she's having five specs they all numbered glasses it's five different frames so one day she came to me and she asked me mama for last three years i've been wearing the same frame <laughs> can i get another one so i said you see you see your need you if you don't need it you don't need it in if you so i took her to the optician optician the anyway too eager one more chashma one more kharcha so finally till one of her spoke specs then she agreed she said mama i don't need another one i'm very happy we couldn't find the right frame for her unfortunately one of her the uh, lenses broke 
and one of the lens is broken we had to get another one so that's how now she has two only but i'm grateful to god that she's happy with the two <laughs> she did not insist for five i was shocked so but you know school your and then the i'm not saying that her parents are not doing well or something but they are all aware still you know they are even your good friends sometimes give you wrong indications what you should do and what you should not have so the tools should not be a distraction you know from education should not be a distraction for self awareness how can whether i'm wearing this specs or something else define who chaya sharma is you know so that aspect slowly slowly children will grow but it takes time it doesn't come in a day appreciation of the media due to adequate exposure there is there are a lot of film clubs and all in schools all but nobody sits down and does the real appreciation you see the older movies was there not uh, you know the they were sarees they will wear properly the even the you know clothes they will wear will be appropriate there will be uh, you know you will understand when one falls in love with another one but less you know uh, you know a more appropriately done uh, but now it is more openly done now this is ott available ott you can if it is so dangerous that some of the uh, things i really don't want my daughter to see at her age point is that but you can't stop it it is the age of the internet this is age of information so information fine but choosing the wrong creating the wrong role models and stereotypes is something we must think about and showing the criminals sometimes as heroes you know and puri in the whole film is doing crime and he's the hero and then all the movies and the part and the everything is being copied this is sad and so when we talk of children when we talk of you know uh, uh, people in the house we have to stop that narrative when we are talking to children we have to tell them oh yeah this guy is a criminal how long will he last in the end he gets shot everything is fine but the thrill the kick the you know all the hormones working on their <laughs> young teenager lives they will not be able to differentiate that is the role of adults that is the role of you know education so eulogizing the wrong behavior the wrong uh, person next slide please with due respect to the parents and other next one so basically the long term social societal impact would be you know the education's contribution to making sure that you have a society which is engaged which is informed and you should be addressing the root causes of crime it is very the police is not working eh very easy what are you doing for for making your society crime free how is everything is police creating poverty is poor police creating inequality no 90% of the times when people come to me and they in they you know they say oh, and when we do preventive policing people find it uncomfortable what is preventive policing for us if you put a barricade everybody hey, why put barricade here my road was clear from here i should have gone but we have put the preventive barricade there because we know if you give it free wheeling then somebody will have an accident somebody will have a road rage here this this barricade may also prevent us nature from running away so number of things so, so we go to senior citizens house ring the bell say ayya please put magic eye please put this chain hey why have you come and bothered i am for sleeping i don't want to talk to you they will throw the person out so point is it preventive policing is involves a lot of hard work but when we do preventive policing it causes a lot of hard work and it is never rewarded so long it is never rewarded you catch a murderer you will be given a medal preventive policing is silent policing it never gets rewarded and therefore society should understand that we as society as education institutes you know all should contribute ngos to making the society crime free by making sure right things are given to our children right making sure that all those people you see jails when i when i was in nhrc jails are not where people when people look at jails though they from normal perspective they'll say ha ah, put that fellow behind the jail gone fellow if it's your brother what will you do are he's gone to jail at 3 days a poor guy let him come out he'll improve now he's learned his lesson that's what i'm saying the jails are not to incarcerate people for life it is for people to improve now some people go inside the jail and do very well they do they learn bakery they come out they do a baking course and then they open bakeries in uh, uh, you know places some of them learn painting some of them do some other things so my issue is only little bit that 
how you view things you know uh, that matters so that's all i have to say and thank you very much for having me here it was a lovely very attentive audience i hope i didn't bore you Shining in someone's darker hours, and I saw Ma'am as the moon benefiting for human rights. Now I request the faculty of DDE for the oath of thanks. Good morning, dignitaries and dear participants. As we come to the end of today's edition one DDE lecture series, impactful education towards crime prevention. It is a privilege for me to deliver the vote of thanks. This program by DDE Pondicherry University has been informative and oriented us to various perspectives of crime prevention. The knowledge sharing by Srimati Chaya Sharma, IPS Joint Commissioner of Police, New Delhi, was relevant and facilitated adapting to changing timings. We are immensely grateful to you, ma'am, for your precious time for this valuable knowledge sharing engagement. The best ever efforts of your team are unfolded by the leader who steers forward the team with his inspirational motivation and rock support. Our Honorable Vice Chancellor Pro Professor Gurmit Singh Ji has always been the phenomenal leader who has enabled us to work that extra mile. Thank you very much, sir. Heartfelt gratitude to our Director Culture, Professor Rajiv Jain, sir. Uh, for his absolute support and valuable guidance, we are thankful to you, sir. We are very grateful to Director Studies, Registrar, Finance Officer, Controller of Examinations, Librarian and all the officers of the University for the support extended. Our gratitude to all deans, HODs, departments and uh, faculty of various departments who have attended this program and graced this occasion. Our heartfelt acknowledgement to the Chairman, East Coast Hospital of Dr. N. Murugeshan and Vice Chairman of uh, Sarada Gangadhan College, Sri Palani Raja for their students' participation in this program. We are indebted uh, for the support and cooperation extended by our colleagues, Professor T. Marx, Professor uh, L.A. Raja, Dr. Praveen, da Dr. Ram Mohan Singh, Dr. Gurminder Gar, Dr. Ashita, Dr. Santosh Matthew, Dr. Krishna Jaiswal and Dr. Vishal Singh towards the success of this event. The heads and technical team of the electrical wing, engineering wing, EMRC and guest house have been our best aids towards rendering this lecture series in a blended mode, both offline and online and their timely help is valued. Thanks a lot. We thank uh, and appreciate uh, the Deputy Director, uh, Deputy Registrar, DDE, all faculty members of DDE, Academic Coordinator and all the staff at DDE for their contribution towards making this lecture series a reality. Thank you, Black Now, our social media team for the digital visibility, creativity and uh, coverage of this lecture series. To the press fraternity for coverage and publicity, our heartful gratitude. Our gratitude to every stakeholder who has contributed directly or indirectly to make this morning a success. To the students of various institutions with us today, you have been a wonderful audience. Our best wishes for an enlightening future ahead. With thanks to divine grace, I wish all safe times, good health, continued learning and endless progression. Thank you. Thank you.